Bangor. From the great north woods to the rockbound coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, we'll hear reactions from the community regarding the recent decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. Plus, an iconic Maine tree was the focus of a food festival in Dover Foxcroft over the weekend. And on Friday, young cadets were welcomed back into Castine after spending two months at sea. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Joe Cortez. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're in the final hour here of Good Morning Maine. The day looks pretty nice. A little cooler. A little cooler this morning. It's about 66 outside. Yeah, a nice reprieve. We've needed it. Yes, we do. Let's turn at a first check of our forecast with Devin Biggs. He joins us now. And thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, we haven't talked about this in a while. Air quality alerts. We have some issues with that this morning, especially across the southwestern parts of the state where code orange air quality could be an issue that is considered unhealthy for sensitive groups. So if you fall into that category, definitely want to stay inside today and keep the windows shut in a lot of ways for the air to remain rather healthy for you, though, as those air quality alerts will last till about 2.45 p.m. this afternoon. As you will have some rain moving in, which will help to clean the air out. And there's also a small crowd advisory lasting until about 6 p.m. with gusty winds out beyond the way as well. For now, though, we are dry, but clouds are moving in from the west and chances for showers, even a few rumbles of thunder will be possible later today, though, as a cold front moves in from the west. And once it passes later on, another system will move in and give temperatures a boost. But for now, watching the rain moving in from the west going toward the east. We'll watch a track to the east today, then becoming partly cloudy and even mostly clear later tonight. But areas of fog will be possible in a few areas as we head towards early tomorrow morning. So the early forecast for the rest of the morning period showing clouds moving in. Chances for showers and thunderstorms throughout the afternoon period. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Joe and Emma. Thank you, Devin. The U.S. Supreme Court overturned the 49 year old ruling in Roe versus Wade Friday, which had legalized abortions nationwide. The overturning of Roe means abortion will now become a state issue. Maine's congressional delegation weighed in on the decision. Independent U.S. Senator Angus King said, quote, The right to a safe legal abortion has been reaffirmed by the court time and time again. But this new majority has decided to overwrite longstanding precedent to impose their own personal and religious views across on women across the country. Senior U.S. Senator Susan Collins released a statement saying, in part, the Supreme Court abandoned a 50-year-old precedent at the time that the country is desperate for stability. This ill-considered action will further divide the country at a moment when, more than ever in modern times, we need the court to show both consistency and restraint. Throwing out a precedent overnight that a country has relied upon for half a century is not a conservative one. It is a sudden and radical jolt to the country that will lead to political chaos, anger, and a further loss of confidence in our government. Second Congressional District Congressman Jared Golden said in part, the majority opinion is wrong on principle and it is wrong on the merits, tossing aside decades of established precedent. In many parts of the country, there will be serious and harmful consequences for millions of women. And following that decision, we visited the downtown Bangor area where people shared their thoughts. I'm actually very happy for it. It's allowing now states to have the ability to approve or deny length of time for it to happen. I just think it's one of the things babies deserve to live. It's not happy. You know, it's a, a sad day for women or anybody. What's next? It's about time. It's really terrible. It's um, like a war on women. I think it's classist, you know. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's just another punch in the gut. All of the rights of bodily autonomy or just human autonomy are up into question. It's genuinely, as a younger person, I'm 27 years old. I think for the first time, I really don't have much hope for the country. Governor Janet Mills held a press conference Friday to give her thoughts on the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade has sent shockwaves throughout the nation. Several main leaders and officials have given their reaction to the news, including Governor Janet Mills. How frustrating and appalling it is 
to learn that the majority of the U.S. Supreme Court feel that women's rights and women's health care can be treated in as cavalier a fashion as they have done. According to Mills, this action won't get rid of abortions, but rather it will only serve to get rid of safe and legal abortions in dozens of states across the country. Not in this state. I will not let that happen in this state. That's why for the last three and a half years we've worked so hard to put in our statutes basic protections for the right to safe and legal abortion. Mills says voters ultimately have a choice in Maine and every other state to determine who will stand up for their rights. And as long as I am governor, I will stand up for those rights because unlike the majority of the U.S. Supreme Court, I do not believe that women's rights and women's health care are dispensable. She says this news has obviously created an emotional reaction for many people. And I'm pretty angry. But what I don't want to see happen as well is sort of people taking to the streets and threatening violence. The governor says people on both sides of this issue must continue to maintain a level of civility and respect. Reporting from the State House in Augusta, I'm Dylan Holloway for ABC7 and Fox 22. The, the Uvalde, Texas mass shooting that claimed the lives of 19 children shocked the nation. A bill proposing to add more gun safety protections recently passed in the U.S. Senate. A.J. Douglas has the details. Our bill will save lives. Senator Susan Collins partnered with other lawmakers for a bipartisan Safer Communities Act. The potential law will allow additional funding to states to restrict firearm access to those deemed a danger to themselves or others. And helps ensure that dangerous criminals and those who are adjudicated as suffering from mental illness cannot purchase firearms. The bill plans to extend background checks of those 18 to 21 and the National Instant Criminal Background Check System by reviewing juvenile and mental health records. Prosecution of those convicted of buying or selling guns illegally, known as straw purchases, will face stricter convictions. Our bill establishes new specific criminal offenses with significant penalties for straw purchasers and firearms traffickers. What it really seeks to do is um, make it easier for federal prosecutors to prosecute uh, in a more streamlined way these straw purchases. Angus Norcross, treasurer for Pine Tree State Rifle and Pistol Association, says more extensive background checks for people 18 to 21 will result in delays in the NICS system. He fears any added gun safety laws will nudge states into passing red flag laws. Executive Director for Maine Gun Safety Coalition says the organization has pushed for exactly that fellow organizations around the state will be pushing to have a real red flag option um, in the upcoming legislative session, um, in addition to the yellow paper law. Senator Susan Collins emphasizes that she has no motivation to take away any law-abiding citizens' Second Amendment right. A.J. Douglas, ABC7, Fox 22. A Newburgh man made his first court appearance Friday following an incident that lasted hours. 51-year-old Lee Baker had his bail set at $10,000 cash by a Penobscot County judge. Baker was arrested and charged with domestic violence, reckless conduct, domestic violence terrorizing, and domestic violence criminal threatening. Around noon Thursday, the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office responded to a report of a firearm being discharged and a female saying she had been assaulted. Deputies made contact with the woman and attempted to make contact with Baker. After several failed attempts, the Sheriff's Office Special Response Team and State Police Tactical Team responded to the scene. Several hours later, Baker was taken into custody without incident and transported to the Penobscot County Jail. The time is now 8.09. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the oyster industry has seen its fair share of profit this year. We'll check in with a small operation that is reaping the benefits. But first, here's a quick look at our overnight forecast. We'll have a high of 72 degrees today. A little bit of showers moving in midday and into the afternoon. Tonight, they'll continue when temperatures drop back down to a low of 55. And tomorrow, we're back up in the high 70s with partially cloudy skies. As a working mom of five, I'm feeling the burden of rising prices. But instead of getting inflation under control, the liberals in Washington are attacking America's tech innovators. Talk about being out of touch. 
The Leps bill would take away the technology we depend on, put our personal data at risk, make China stronger and America weaker. I don't understand how any Republican senator could support this liberal nonsense. Tell Senate conservatives to stand up for American technology. At Hashi's Auto Enhancing, our focus is on the appearance, longevity, and value of your vehicle. Does your undercarriage look like this? You can go from this to this. And if you have a new vehicle, you can avoid this. Our annual undercoating service will add years of life to your vehicle. At Hashi's, we also do rhino linings. We can rhino rocker panels, bumpers, trailers, side-by-sides, and more. We take pride in making your ride shine inside and out. Book one of our detailing packages. Bring your ride to us to protect your investment. On the Road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from Bucksport, is sponsored by University of Maine Early College, tuition-free online summer courses for high school students, umaine.edu slash early college. Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer, with 29 locations owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. And Sweet Cheeks Bakery, wait until you see the size of our whoopie pies, and we won't tell anyone you had pie for breakfast. What I want you to hear today is we're there to listen. We also understand that this is a really hard step to take. And so we're going to help guide you. We're going to listen. You can call us anytime, 24-7. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what you need. And we're going to try our best to help fill those gaps as to where you're having barriers or you're meeting challenges. We just hope you call. Whoopie Pie Fest is back in Dover Foxcroft, and thousands gathered to get a sweet taste of the main staple everyone talks about. Festival organizer Patrick Myers said the event attracted nearly 8,000 people. He says proceeds from the festival benefit the Center Theatre for the Performing Arts. Many who came to the event were first-timers. I'm from uh, Saratoga Springs, Utah, and yes, this is my first Whoopie Pie Festival. It's kind of like a big like Oreo cake kind of... Sweetie Pies and Dexter took home first place in the People's Choice Awards for Best Traditional Whoopie Pie. Other contests included the best use of Allen's Coffee Brandy in Whoopie Pies and Best Flavored Whoopie Pie. A pumpkin pie from Saco took that award. The oyster industry is booming and farmers across Maine are harvesting during the busy summer months for residents and visitors alike. Stephanie Wittenbach dove into a small oyster business in Deer Isle and has the story. I love uh, just being out in the water. It's my happy place. Abby Barrows is an oyster farmer with two other females contributing to her business in Deer Isle. Her company, Long Cove Sea Farm. She bought the business from a previous fisher back in 2015 and has grown ever since. A lot of wonderful freedoms of um, running your own business, but also a lot of responsibility. Barrow says she has only two other people who help, one farm manager and the other Gisela Nucciaroni, who is her farm hand and helps on deck at Long Cove in Penobscot Bay. See, I went to school at COA. I was mutual friends with someone who did an internship two years ago with Abby. Um, her name's Anna, she's not here today. <laughs> Barrow says it could take a few years for oysters to become market size. She and Nucciaroni spread nets across Long Cove in Penobscot Bay and every morning clean them off, take the ones that are ready for shipping and does it all over again the next day. On her boat, Barrow shucks an oyster and tells us the biology. So this is the, called the lid, that's the cup, and this is the hinge. You can see the muscle there, right above it is his heart, um, this is his stomach. These are the gills, so they pass the water through there. That's what they're, you know, they're filtering that 50 gallons of water a day. You sever the bottom of that muscle so they can loosen them from the shell. And now he's ready to eat. Barrow says she hopes her story will encourage farmers in Deer Isle and Stonington to look into oyster farming and get into the business. She says her biggest dream is to reduce plastic in the business and educate people on the island. In her store, she sells homemade mignette for the oysters and shucking knives. You can find more of those items at longcoveseafarm.com. In Deer Isle, I'm Stephanie Wittenbach reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. We're 14 minutes past the top of the hour. After the break, family members and friends laid their eyes on their favorite sailors as the newly certified U.S. Marine officers have made port. We'll take a look next. Plus, this morning, Americans are waking up to the first week without legal abortion in every state. We'll have the latest out of Washington when we come back. 
Up in Smoke Fireworks is family owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit, and Black Hat brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. blast. Up in Smoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport. Make the most of your waterfront with a Shoremaster Dock System from Hammond Lumber Company. Shoremaster Docks and Boat Lifts have been the trusted choice for decades. When you choose Shoremaster, you get the expert product knowledge and first-class service you've come to expect from Hammond Lumber. Hammond is the country's largest stocking dealer of Shoremaster products, so you don't have to wait to get the dock system you want. And Hammond offers statewide delivery and professional service after the sale. Get started on your dream waterfront today with Shoremaster from Hammond Lumber Company. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. These local businesses would like to wish you a happy Independence Day, along with safe and fun celebrations all summer long. Fox Tonight, it's a family affair. First, tonight's the night. Let's leave it up. Will this daddy-daughter duo be a million-dollar duet? This was the best thing I could have asked for. I'm trying to keep my fake eyelashes on. <laughs> All new Don't Forget the Lyrics. Then, Beach Shazam. is one bad mother. Can these mommy-daughter duos hit the right million-dollar notes? Jamie! We gonna be Shazam today. Yeah. Don't forget the lyrics to Beach Shazam. It's an all-new million-dollar music Monday tonight on Fox. Up in Smoke Fireworks is family owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit, and Black Hat brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. blast. Up in Smoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport. The Maine Maritime Academy cadets returned back to Castine Harbor Friday morning after spending nearly two months on the ocean. Matthew Duransic covered the touching moment. Maine Maritime Academy cadets returned with their families after being overseas for 62 days. The cadets traveled to both domestic and international ports, where they learned about the importance of teamwork in various cultures of the places they visited, which include Charleston, South Carolina, Bermuda, and Iceland. The educational trip was led by Captain Jordan MacArthur. MacArthur talked about the important takeaways of the trip, including teamwork skills and learning about oneself. The, the biggest thing is that they learn about themselves. I is learning how to work as a team, learning how to work safely, use, use tools properly, and, and how to relate to each other in a very um, confining um, shipboard environment. Upon returning, cadets got their names called and shook hands with MacArthur before returning with their families. Along the voyage, the group became one unified family. So we sailed about, about 170 students uh, between juniors and freshmen and overall everyone kind of becomes like siblings almost. Um, we are predominantly male so it's kind of like having 150 brothers. During the two month journey, the cadets completed requirements in order to become certified U.S. Marine officers for the United States Coast Guard. This year's group was smaller than past years, which usually averages 240 cadets. However, the group's spirit was just as strong. It, it was great. The, uh, a, lot of, a lot of really positive energy. Everybody's kind of thinking that COVID's behind us. But, you know, wherever we went, it was, uh, you know, everybody was all in learning about the different cultures and exploring and, and just, you know, being good ambassadors for the state of Maine and for the U.S. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7, Fox 22. The time is now 8.19. Let's get a full look at our forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. He's in with the latest. Good morning, Devin. Thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Already, we haven't talked about this in a while. We have air quality alerts giving us some problems, though, which could reach into the unhealthy for sensitive groups area or, or code orange and a few other ways to describe it. So if you fall into that category, though, definitely stay inside, trying to limit your time outdoors and definitely try, try to find ways to keep the air healthy for you until things improve during the afternoon period until about 2 45 p.m. when these air quality alerts across the southwestern parts of our viewing area get dropped but there's also a small crowd advisory up until about 6 p.m. this evening as well 
but the cold front moving in wave heights will be rather active as things begin to move through. But for now, we're watching clouds moving in from the west to the east. We have rain developing as well. Showers and thunderstorms possible by late morning into the afternoon period. As this front right here continues to move through, there'll be another one moving in rather soon. This will give temperatures a boost, but temperatures will be held down today into the lower 70s with the rain now begin to move in. Wave heights are at around four feet, so starting to increase, and we'll see this increasing just a little bit more as things do continue to develop. And of course, gusty winds today reaching up to about 20 to even 25 miles per hour, even close to 30 miles per hour along the coast will continue to be possible. That wind right there, obviously the reason why that small craft advisory is in effect. The new winds will start to calm down later on tonight as the system begins to move through. Temperatures, let's talk about those. Our average high is 78 degrees will be below that in the lower 70s today. Upper 70s Tuesday, lower 80s Wednesday, Thursday, middle 80s by Friday, then cooling off a little bit by Saturday and also in a Sunday. Dew points will be on the rise as well, kind of throughout the week. So we have it today, though. Then falling back by Tuesday, Wednesday, and a Thursday as the cold front moves in, even in the Friday, too, but starting to rise again as we head towards the weekend. So some days today, and especially Saturday, starting to feel a little humid around here again. So future cast moving forward, the showers and storms moving through throughout the daytime today. Things calming down later on tonight or a partly cloudy sky, some areas of dense fog will be possible in a few spots. So moving forward today, afternoon showers and thunderstorms, highs in the lower 70s at south wind getting up to about 15 miles per hour. Later on tonight, showers and thunderstorms early in the areas of dense fog, lows in the middle 50s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. Moving ahead towards tomorrow, upper 70s part of the county, maybe a few sprinkles or isolated rain showers possible. With that west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. In Wisconsin recreation extended forecast, we dry out by Wednesday, lower 80s under a partly cloudy sky. Another small chance for rain on Thursday with highs in the lower 80s. Middle 80s return on Friday under a mostly cloudy sky. It wasn't just a little bit of soot on an old family photo. It wasn't just a couple of books soaked in water. And when you called Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, you were not just another customer. That family photo hangs high yet again. And those irreplaceable first editions stay cemented in history. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. Out with the old and in with the new. Check out Pat's Pizza Specials. Tuesdays, $5 spaghetti and meatballs. Tuesday, all day breadstick special. Wednesday, large one topping pizzas. $8. Wednesday, small steak and cheese with french fries. $6.25. Friday, fish with french fries. $7.50. Saturday, small one out of pizza, fountain soda. $7.25. And you can still save some dough. Bring the family to the all new Pat's Pizza. 662 Main Road North, Hamden. ABC 7, Fox 22, CNK Variety, and Prouty Auto Body want to send you to see Keith Urban live in concert on his The Speed of Now World Tour with special guest Ingrid Andrus, Saturday, July 23rd at the Maine Savings Amphitheater in Bangor. Sign up to win tickets by registering at CNK Variety in Herman and Prouty Auto Body in Dover Foxcroft. Win tickets to see Keith Urban July 23rd on the Bangor Waterfront. It takes all types to play Family Feud, the doghouse daddy. What's the least sexy thing your wife has ever worn? Granny panties, Steve. The family blabbermouth. Grandma sick of grandpa falling asleep in the middle of what? Going to the bathroom. <laughs> Herman, get up off this toilet. <laughs> See all the types on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Shockwaves still being felt from the Supreme Court's decision Friday to overturn Roe v. Wade, the landmark case that gave women a constitutional right to an abortion. Protests continued in cities from coast to coast this weekend, and now there's a new focus of this tense debate, the abortion pill. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. Overnight, a candlelight vigil on the steps of the Supreme Court following a weekend of protests from abortion rights activists after the court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Protesters filling the streets in cities nationwide. Most demonstrations peaceful, but in Vermont, windows seen smashed at the State House, and in Colorado, a Christian pregnancy center burned. 
the high court's decision now leaving it up to individual states to regulate abortion. So far, eight states have already outlawed abortion and 11 no longer have a single clinic performing the procedure. There's confusion, shock, concern, um, a lot of questions about why care was not available in Arkansas, but it would be available potentially in Illinois, for example. Anti-abortion rights groups celebrating. I'm actually very thrilled uh, after many, many rosaries and a lot of praying. For many, the focus now turning to abortion pills. Recent data shows abortion pills, some mailed to women and taken at home, are being used in more than half of procedures in the U.S. Hours after the court's decision, Attorney General Merrick Garland saying states cannot prohibit the use of the FDA-approved abortion pill, Mifepristone. But in South Dakota, the governor indicating she plans to ban the pill from being mailed to women in her state. I don't believe that the telemedicine abortions are safe for individuals, for women to conduct at home. Other states like Texas, Arkansas and Arizona also working to restrict abortion pills, teeing up a potential clash in court with the Biden administration. Still to come here on the second half of our show. From a blueberry cheesecake, from blueberry cheesecake waffles to chicken and waffles, this Dover Foxcroft restaurant offers over 25 different options on their menu. Plus, a cheer squad found a way to raise some money as they needed funds to compete at Huston University for the National Cheerleading Association camp. This and more local news as Good Morning Maine continues. It's your personal security detail. It's your invisible enforcer. It's your blind spot spotter, dedicated protector, precious cargo carrier, IIHS top safety pick plus. The Hyundai Tucson, Palisade, and Santa Fe. It's your journey. Own it. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or Santa Fe for $279 a month with new inventory arriving daily. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. The best value for your money is always at the Furniture Gallery. And now, during our Summer Sizzler Sale, take home this Ashley recliner for only $2.99. And take an additional 10% off all other recliners. The Furniture Gallery's Camp and Cottage Queen Foam or Inner Spring Mattresses start at only $2.99. Big Time Inflation Buster Sofa and Love Seat for an incredible low price of $9.99. Special financing is available only at the Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Gorham, North Windham, and now open in Newport. If you've been injured in an accident, tell them you mean business. It's Monday, June 27th of 2022. What a great weekend. We'll be in the 70s today, and Devin has all the details in just a moment. A little history, video game company Atari was founded 50 years ago today, and soon after that, they came out with Pong. Actor Tobey Maguire is 47, Khloe Kardashian, famous for being famous, is 38, and today is National Please Take My Children to Work Day. Yeah, so you don't, it's not take your kids away, it's have somebody else take your kids right, away. Right, right, <laughs> big distinction between National Take Your Kids to Work Day. Yeah, so yes. make sure if somebody does want to take your kids, you, obviously they have to be trusted. Right. you got to make sure it's, you know, go grandma right. or like on uncle or something like that. Right. But it's fun little Yeah, put that responsibility on somebody else. It's a national <laughs> holiday. And here's a look at some of the upbeat stories making headlines today. A U.S. Navy destroyer from World War II has become the deepest shipwreck ever found. The USS Samuel B. Roberts, also known as the Sammy B, has been found in the Western Pacific. It was found broken in two more than four miles deep. The ship was sunk in the Battle of Leyte in 1944. Thousands braved a heat wave to hear Pope Francis Sunday. Temperatures reached nearly 100 degrees in Vatican City. Despite the high temperatures, worshippers say they didn't mind, adding that to see the pontiff was a dream come true. It was Beatlemania in Mexico as an estimated 1,000 Volkswagen Beetles took to the streets of Mexico City. The bug made its debut in 1938 as an affordable vehicle to promote car ownership among Germans. The last Beetle rolled off the assembly line in 2019. And time is still on Mick Jagger's side. The Rolling Stones frontman showing he hasn't lost a step as the band's 60th anniversary concert was held in London this weekend. The band's first gig was July 12, 1962. The Stones will tour Europe throughout July. And those are some of the other stories making headlines on ABC7. And let's turn it over to meteorologist Devin Biggs. Good morning, Devin. 
And thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman and Orono, Maine. All right, we haven't talked about this in a while. Air quality alerts. We have some issues with that this morning, especially across the southwestern parts of the state where code orange air quality could be an issue that is considered unhealthy for sensitive groups. So if you fall into that category, Category. Definitely want to stay inside today and keep the windows shut in a lot of ways for the air to remain rather healthy for you, though, as those air quality alerts will last till about 2.45 p.m. this afternoon, as we will have some rain moving in, which will help to clean the air out. And there's also a small crowd advisory lasting until about 6 p.m. with gusty winds out beyond the way as well. For now, though, we are dry, but clouds are moving in from the west and chances for showers, even a few rumbles of thunder will be possible later today, though, as a cold front moves in from the west. And once it passes later on, another system will move in and give temperatures a boost. But for now, watching the rain moving in from the west going toward the east. We'll watch a track to the east today, then becoming partly cloudy and even mostly clear later tonight. But areas of fog will be possible in a few areas as we head towards early tomorrow morning. So the early forecast for the rest of the morning period showing clouds moving in. Chances for showers and thunderstorms throughout the afternoon period. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Joe and Emma. Thank you, Devin. Bangor Waterfront turned up the heat with a fan favorite food trucks during its annual Beats and Eats food truck festival on Saturday. The food truck festival featured tons of food and lots of drinks. Some of the food trucks included This Little Piggy, Mr. Tuna, and Wanderlust Coffee Company. The event kicked off around 11 a.m., but the party didn't stop until around 8 o'clock. We just came out to kind of get out and check out the weather that finally arrived. Right now it's 80 degrees. As you know, it's been a little bit uh, less than temperate right now. Summer weather, so we're just trying to get out and get some good food. During the festival, people could enjoy music from the main stage by the Tourmalines and Rowdy Yates. A Dover Foxcroft restaurant doesn't only just make waffles for breakfast, but also for lunch, dinner, and dessert. When Michael Begley, his mom and stepdad, moved to Maine, they realized there weren't many options for breakfast restaurants. Originally starting in downtown Dover Foxcroft, the family opened up Peace and Love, or Peace, Love, and Waffles in 2019. The restaurant shut down in 2020, but reopened the following year. From a blueberry cheesecake waffle to chicken and waffles, the restaurant offers over 25 different options on its menu. These are going to be waffle whoopie pies. We make them right in the waffle irons that we have here. And we wanted it to be kind of a reflection of what our menu is here. So we're going to have blueberry waffle whoopie pies, maple bacon. We've got a rainbow one that we're doing. We uh, ube, which is a yam from the Philippines. He said they planned to make about 2,000 waffle whoopie pies for the annual whoopie pie festival in Dover Foxcroft. I wonder what that total count was. I know. Hopefully, I mean, either 2,000 and freshly sold out, or maybe they had to make a couple more. Yeah, if there's leftovers, I'm, I'm in Bangor. We're all game. Yeah. <laughs> and from Iceland to Maine, a Dover Foxcroft woman opened her bakery during the pandemic after her previous job went out of business. As Sierra Jordan reports, this was the first time she baked some delicious treats for the Whoopie Pie Festival. Born and raised in North Iceland, Iris Oscar Dottersvale has been in love with baking ever since she was young. Oscar Dottersvale began working in the culinary industry when she was 15. She became the first woman in Iceland's history to win their national baking competition. It's been a big part of my life for a while now. <laughs> Oscar Dottersvale said she met her husband, Joel, online and shortly immigrated to Dover Foxcroft in 2017. She's like, what is a whoopie pie? And so I'm like, okay, I have to figure out how to explain this. The top of two cupcakes with stuff in the middle. In March of 2020, Oscar Dottersvale says she lost her job at her bakery, which closed down due to the pandemic. Her husband says he couldn't just let her give up her passion. We had a really tough conversation, you know, what are we going to do? What, what are you going to do? Um, and God love my parents said, no, we know what we're going to do. So they took their money and time and found the location and we all kind of helped get stuff where it needs to be. And even in the middle of the pandemic, opened the doors. From cakes to pies to pastries, Vale's Custom Cakes opened its doors to the Dover Foxcroft community in 2021. Basically we've been helping her get like all the like flour, the sugar, eggs, and the eggs. 
This tray of booby pies is not yet finished, but it is something that folks can expect that Saturday's Whoopie Pie Festival. Oscar Daughters Vale says she plans on baking about 2,000 of these Whoopie Pies and hopes she doesn't run out for tomorrow's event. So it's very exciting to finally participate for the first time, especially since the festival hasn't been held for three years now because of the pandemic. In Dover, Foxcroft, I'm Sierra Jordan reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. The RSU 22 cheerleading team held a car wash in Hamden on Sunday as they looked to raise money for the National Cheerleading Association camp. Hamden Academy head cheer coach Mackenzie Madden says camp can be very expensive and the car wash allows everyone to have a chance to attend. Senior Montana Lang Ill at Hamden Academy says the camp is four days long and it's a chance for the team to learn new skills. It's really, really good for team bonding. I think that's yeah. where we start making all of our friendships and like get used to each other for the year. Madden says enough money was raised at Hassan for each team to attend the camp. And still to come here this morning, the Brady Nickerson Foundation held their third annual co-ed softball tournament. Tyler Cruz will show us how nine teams came together to support one cause. But first, here's a quick look at our overnight forecast. A high of 72 degrees for your Monday. A little bit of showers moving in today, and they will continue tonight. Temperatures dropping down to a low of 55. It'll be a chilly evening for us, and tomorrow we're back up in the high 70s. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power, control your life. Visit Generac.com. Hey, I'm Matt, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken biscuit is the freshly baked, flaky, buttery biscuit. When I take a bite, it's kind of like, you know, crispy, soft, crispy. Crispy outside, soft interior, crispy chicken. There's really nothing like it. Hey, I'm Alexa, and the little thing that I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken biscuit is the chicken itself. It is more than scrumptious. It is more than delicious. It is scrump diddly -umptious. I know that's not a real word, but I love it. <laughs> On the Road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from Bucksport, is sponsored by Bob Small Engines, your dealer for CF Moto side-by-sides, Husqvarna chainsaws, BCS tillers, and Echo Power products. Supported by Jenkins Beach in Dedham, a family beach in a protected area featuring swimming and rentals for watercraft and cottages. And supported by John R. Crooker Insurance Agency in Bucksport for personal and commercial insurance. Yes. yes, yes, yes. I'll have what she's having, and you can too. Get ready for the good dish. Delicious twists on your favorite comfort foods. Decadent desserts you can whip up in no time. And game-changing shortcuts. What's for dinner is about to get way easier and way more fun than doing the dishes. So get ready to get dishing. Weekdays at 1 on Fox 22. The Harper Boys are broing it up and crushing it with bromance. Two and a half men, five nights a week. On Fox 22. Welcome back in. Thanks for staying with us. Beautiful weekend up here, right? We will begin with some news out of Skowhegan breaking late on Friday. It was first reported by the Kennebec Journal. Riverhawks athletic director John Christopher will be stepping down from his duties at AD at the end of the month of June. That's on Thursday. Christopher, who was AD while his son Marcus and daughter JC competed in the black and orange, will be replaced by Brian Jones. Jones is currently the assistant principal at Lawrence High School. Wishing John luck in his next endeavor and Brian luck in the position. We will have more on that story in the coming days. All right, moving on. I said it was a gorgeous day to be outside on Saturday, especially outside playing some softball, slow pitch softball. Brady Nickerson Foundation held their third annual co-ed softball tournament on Saturday with nine teams coming together to support the cause. It means, it means everything to us that people keep seeing what we're doing and want to keep Brady's memory alive and want to help us. The community as a whole, we're coming together and it's my first or second year playing in the tournament, but it's awesome that the community can come together for something like this and make a day of it. 
For the third year in a row, slow pitch softball has been the force bringing people together for a good cause, the Brady Nickerson Foundation. So my wife is a nurse up on the pediatric floors at Northern Light, and uh, it's actually her co-worker that puts it on. Um, so we signed up immediately when we knew who it was for and what it was what it was going towards. Brady was just a teenager when he passed, and according to his family, he was a shining light on everyone he crossed paths with. Uh, Brady meant everything <laughs> to everyone. He was 14 when he passed away from pediatric cancer. He was um, diagnosed uh, uh, with bone cancer, and then a month later, he passed away. The Brady Nickerson Foundation is more than just a yearly softball tournament. They also host a nice fishing derby in the winter, as well as a golf tournament at Traditions in the fall, and more events. It's all an ode to who Brady was as a kid. I don't think Brady was ever inside. So doing everything outside and not just grieving the loss of him, but doing all the fun things to kind of keep still doing fun things with him all year is what it's all about. Mitchell says a story like Brady's hits home to anyone who hears it. People are quick to throw their support behind the Nickerson's cause. You know, when you hear of a 14-year-old kid passing away from cancer, that really it makes reality really hits you and when you actually meet someone who says like me that was my little brother they just want to do what they can so while it can get competitive out on the diamond that's what it's about it's about having fun it's not i mean we're all competitive but at the end of the day it's about having fun and we're not working and just enjoy each other's time there'll be some trash talk here and there but i mean you're playing competitive it's hot outside everyone's getting cranky there's gonna be some trash talk but everyone it's it's the community friends whatnot that's what we're here for saturday wasn't about a win or a loss but a community rounding together to lift up their own and maybe hit some dingers while they're at it. The dingers. <laughs> Something about just swinging the bat and just watching a ball fly. <laughs> no, but just the, the friendships that you build, like literally everyone here, we're all friends. That was a fun event. If anybody needs a second baseman next summer, feel free to call me up. Can't wait to cover their other ones later in the year. Always great to see everyone outdoors having some fun and supporting each other. Moving on now and some news from the Bruins this week. A lot of news from the Bruins this week, actually. They've interviewed David Quinn, former Rangers head coach, and Jay Leach of Seattle, formerly with the P-Bruins, for the coaching position. But for the roster, it's been reported first by Joe McDonald that Patrice Bergeron will be returning to the Bees next season, likely on a one-year deal. They'll be meeting to officially sign the deal in the upcoming week, but... Big news from a big question mark for the Bees, whether or not they're veterans and really the center of their team. We're going to give it one last go ride, and if it is a one-year deal, I'm thinking the team will have a win-now mindset, almost like the last dance. And last but not least with the Bees, two Bruins with some league-wide recognition. First, Charlie McAvoy making the NHL's second All-Star team, and then everyone in Maine's favorite Bruin, Jeremy Swayman. He was named to the NHL's All-Rookie team. One of six rookies to make the squad. He led all rookie goaltenders in wins with 23. Goals against average with 2.4. And save percentage, 91.4%. Former Black Bear was the rookie of the month in February. And he's the first Bruins player to make that team since McAvoy. And the first Bruins goalie to make it since Andrew Raycraft, Raycroft in 2004. Keep an eye out. We will be hearing from Swayman about his first season in net in Boston in the coming days. All righty. That's all for sports. We'll be right back. When Natural Living Center wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Natural Living Center offers natural groceries, organic produce, the largest selection of supplements in the area, gluten-free products, and more for your health. Attention main fishermen, we want to see your biggest catch and for you to win some great prizes. Go to foxbangor.com and click on contest and giveaway. Then upload your photo for your chance to win. Sponsored by Willie Sports Center, Mill Mall, and Ellsworth. We have everything for fishing from trout to tuna, fly fishing, trolling, and ocean rigging. We carry fat tire e bikes to get to remote spots and snow dog utility machines. We have all your hunting and outdoor essentials. Join us at Fairmont Market in Bangor for hand tossed pizza, sandwiches, salads, and much more. Serving our community since 1925. Fairmont Market is proof that great customer service and delicious food stand the test of time. Open seven days a week. On the Road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from Bucksport, is sponsored by University of Maine Early College, tuition-free online summer courses for high school students, umaine.edu slash early college.
Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer, with 29 locations owned and operated by a main family that cares. And Sweet Cheeks Bakery, wait until you see the size of our whoopie pies, and we won't tell anyone you had pie for breakfast. On the next Last Man Standing, test yourself with a Baxter Relationship Quiz. Wives think we can be their best friend. Uh how can we be friends? We're married. Where there's never a right answer. You really don't consider us friends? Honey, honey, honey. honey. What? We've got something bigger than a friendship. We have a, a legally binding contract. And that's the only thing keeping us together? No, oh, but it, it's an incentive. Last Man Standing. This afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 22. Welcome back into Good Morning, Maine. We're here with Joe Leonard. He's the recently, recently elected um, city councilor of Bangor, Maine. Thank you for being with us. The new mayor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's no, right for the running joke is around here. <laughs> right, right. No, thank you so much. I'm really happy to be on. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, great, it's great to be here. Um, I, I, I feel like I got to say something really quick. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm sorry to like sort of oh, get, jump get right ahead. You're of, good. Um, so... I know this was like a really, really tough weekend for people. This is just keeping it real, unacceptable what happened. Um, we just, half the country just lost their rights. We are going to, I'm going to be very honest with you, this is going to be a tough fight, but Mainers are tough. We're going to get through this. We are going to organize. We are going to fight this fight, and we're going to win your rights back, okay? We're going to need to organize. We're going to need to band together. And when we stand up together, we can achieve the impossible and defeat this evil. So stand, stand together, go to the voting booths, go out and vote, vote in primaries. They matter. And I'll be knocking on your door soon. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm, I'm sorry. I just no, had to no, you can go there. right in there. Go yeah. right in. To, and we can get right into it with the council. Yeah. I mean, what made you run for council? Well, uh, so I guess uh, right from the bottom, uh, but um, I got really angry one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was just like, hey, what are some things that like city councilors can do that can really improve the lives of Bangor? And initially when I first ran, um, I guess it's like almost three years ago now, um, I just ran on the principle of, hey, what are some things that Bangor can do and people can just steal my ideas, just, just steal them. Like, it, any of my platform, anyone who decides to run at some point, steal my ideas. I want you to steal them, okay? <laughs> um, but eventually, a, a good friend of mine, Joe Baldacci, um, he um, saw my campaign, really liked what I was doing, and he said, Joe, I want you to run again. And um, I just continued with that, and the last race um, that, that I was in, we all focused on a huge heap of similar issues. It's a very congenial campaign. It was very um, uh, polite. And even on voting day, all the candidates were like talking to each other, having a good day, um, like even though we were competing against each other. So it was, it was really heartwarming to see so many people in Bangor really understanding the issues that Bangor is facing right now. And w whether it's homelessness, affordable housing, or you know, to trying to get those roads and sidewalks paved, it's, uh, it's really important to um, make sure that we all have the same minds working together. And all, I, everyone in Bangor seems to be on the same page with what's going on. And, that, and that's really wonderful. It makes being a leader so much easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, out of all the issues that you camped, campaigned for, what do you want to kind of grab a hold of first? And what do you think you can put effect on, like, quickly? Well, so the first thing that's uh, coming up right now is um, in the budget, we just find, uh, we are implementing the BCAT program for the police department. I think that's going to be a phenomenal program. I really do. It's going to reduce the workload on police officers because you're just keeping it real. Police officers in Bangor and across the country, they are completely overworked. And we need to do everything we can possible to not use the police as a catch all for every single social issue. It's super important to understand that police officers need to do their jobs to the most that they can with their abilities. And we need to make sure that we invest in social services to uh, help with the issues that, honestly, police officers are trying to handle too much. Like, police officers should not be the ones 
that are handling homeless issues or handling um, like d domestic issues. They should be handling things that are that are criminally associated or things to like help out with the community, keep us safe. Uh, and I think this BCAP program is going to do really good wonders in the short term. I really do. And, and I, I can't take credit for that. That was already being implemented, okay? <laughs> okay. okay. Well, gotcha. well, that's good. I mean, it's continuing on with what's already been put in place and building blocks into making change. But going along with some of those issues, what do you think is going to be one that's more long-term? As you were saying before to the viewers, you know, steal my ideas, take my ideas because you want to see them come through. <laughs> what are one of those ones that you think that's going to take a little longer, but you'll be able to make a change and a difference in? So I've definitely talked to voters about this, and... Um, I'll, I'll just choose one issue because I'm a very technology focused guy. I'm a technology advocate. And whenever I see a really good idea, I just really want to um, express that and try to implement some sort of strategy to involve that into the comprehensive plan, which is what we're developing uh, um, the, the, this coming year. And it's already in place. And there are a lot of really good ideas in there. One of the things I want to make sure that we do is we incorporate pioneering technology into the comprehensive plan so that we don't give it any weird uh, like loops to go through or hurdles to jump over. And one of the things that has been on my uh, radar for a very, very long time was uh, 3D printable housing, affordable 3D printable housing. And I know that's not something that we can implement right now, but we have to remember that the University of Maine was just granted a $35 million federal grant to study affordable 3D printable housing. We have in Texas, there was a National Guard unit that constructed the largest 3D printable building in the Western Hemisphere. And we have a really good battalion, uh, an engineer battalion here in the state of Maine. One thing that uh, uh, the federal government loves to spend money on is DOD. We can easily go to DOD and say, hey, Give us 3D printers. We'll use them. You can make really good bases for them overseas. <laughs> but but like that's something that we can work with. We can work with the University of Maine. We can work with the Engineer Battalion. We can work with the city. We can work with all these different organizations to develop a really good five-year to ten-year plan out to uh, stomp a lot of these issues that we are seeing today. Because right now, to tackle affordable housing, to tackle homelessness, we don't really have a lot of options. The options that we have right now, we just have to take them. Like using the ARPA funds to uh, fund affordable housing or trying to work with other uh, landlords to like work with affordable housing and reduce homelessness. We have to use these options, whatever they are available. But we also have to be uh, mindful of the future. And yeah. one of the things that we can do there is look at technologies, whether it's a app on a phone for making uh, uh, get, getting your marriage certificate uh, from City Hall much easier, or if it's something more complicated like trying to uh, establish residency, it's uh, like these things can be made easier with technology. And I think it's really important if we want to progress as a city that we utilize these technologies. So it seems like there are a lot of plans going forward and a lot of change to come. We want to thank you for uh, joining us here this morning. And on top of it, congratulations. I thank know it's you. in a few hours. He will be sworn in tonight officially. So good luck with that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And thank you all at Bangor, OK? It'll be fun to look at. So you'll be able to check all this out on Facebook and on our website, foxbangor.com. Without further ado, here's meteorologist Devin Biggs with another look at our forecast. Thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England Sorbus Trailer Dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Already, we haven't talked about this in a while. We have air quality alerts giving us some problems, though, which could reach into the unhealthy for sensitive groups area, or, or code orange, and a few other ways to describe it. So if you fall into that category, though, it's definitely stay inside, trying to limit your time outdoors, and definitely try, try to find ways to keep the air healthy for you until things improve during the afternoon period, until about 2.45. 5 p.m. when these air quality alerts across the southwestern parts of our viewing area get dropped. But there's also a small crowd advisory up until about 6 p.m. this evening as well. With the cold front moving in, wave heights will be rather active as things begin to move through. But for now, we're watching clouds moving in from the west to the east. We have rain developing as well. Showers and thunderstorms possible by late morning into the afternoon period. As this front right here continues to move through, there'll be another one moving in rather soon. This will give temperatures a boost, but temperatures will be held down today into the lower 70s with the rain now begin to move in. 
Wave heights are at around four feet, so starting to increase, and we'll see this increasing just a little bit more as things do continue to develop. And of course, gusty winds today reaching up to about 20 to even 25 miles per hour, even close to 30 miles per hour along the coast will continue to be possible. That wind right there, obviously the reason why that small craft advisory is in effect. The new winds will start to calm down later on tonight as the system begins to move through. Temperatures, let's talk about those. Our average high 78 degrees will be below that in the lower 70s today. Upper 70s Tuesday, lower 80s Wednesday, Thursday, middle 80s by Friday, then cooling off a little bit by Saturday and also in a Sunday. Dew points will be on the rise as well, kind of throughout the week. So we have it today, though. Then falling back by Tuesday, Wednesday, and a Thursday as a cold front moves in, even into Friday, too, but starting to rise again as we head towards the weekend. So some days today, and especially Saturday, starting to feel a little humid around here again. So future cast moving forward, the showers and storms moving through throughout the daytime today. Things calming down later on tonight, or a partly cloudy sky, some areas of dense fog will be possible in a few spots. So moving forward today, afternoon showers and thunderstorms, highs in the lower 70s at south when getting up to about 15 miles per hour. Later on tonight, showers and thunderstorms early in the areas of dense fog, lows in the middle 50s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. Moving ahead towards tomorrow, upper 70s part of the county, maybe a few sprinkles or isolated rain showers possible. That west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. In Wisconsin Recreation extended forecast, we dry out by Wednesday, lower 80s under a partly cloudy sky. Another small chance for rain on Thursday with highs in the lower 80s. Middle 80s return on Friday under a mostly cloudy sky. Just a reminder that the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air are brought to you this and every 4th of July by Phantom Fireworks. With state-of-the-art showrooms nationwide, we are America's number one destination for brighter, louder, safer fireworks. Phantom Fireworks, lighting up faces in the backyards of America from coast to coast. Visit fireworks.com for a location near you. This isn't your parents' photo booth. Premier Limousine and DJ presents the latest in photo booth technology with the all-new 2022 Air Booth. Print out everyone's pictures in beautiful full-color photos and have them sent directly to your phone. The new Air Booth is available for weddings, birthdays, class reunions, anniversaries, and corporate events with some of the best and most fun props around. You can book the Air Booth, Limousine, and DJ services separately or take advantage of our very popular package deals. Contact us at Premier Limousine and DJ. ABC7, Fox 22, CNK Variety, and Prouty Auto Body want to send you to see Keith Urban live in concert on his The Speed of Now World Tour with special guest Ingrid Andrus, Saturday, July 23rd at the Maine Savings Amphitheater in Bangor. Sign up to win tickets by registering at CNK Variety in Herman and Prouty Auto Body in Dover Foxcroft. Win tickets to see Keith Urban July 23rd on the Bangor Waterfront. Spend less, get more. I'm there for it. It's Thrifty Week. A week of big stars and big savings. This is $15. That one is $75. Give me that one. And next through, Bobby Flay makes steakhouse burgers on a fast food budget. I love this concept. Like breakfast in bed, it's breakfast in audience. <laughs> next through, The Drew Barrymore Show, Monday at 3 on Fox 22. Is your 4th of July menu looking the same as last year and the year before that? If so, you owe it to yourself and your guests to serve something a bit different. Rather than busting out hamburgers and hot dogs, what do you think about serving a kicked up version of Sloppy Joe? We start by cooking a few slices of bacon. Once they're crispy, we drain them. Meanwhile, in the same skillet, we brown some ground beef along with a chopped onion. Sautéing the meat and onions in the bacon drippings gives this lots of flavor. Now we add in the bacon that we've crumbled, along with some barbecue sauce and a little salt and pepper. Then it's up to you whether you want to serve it right out of the skillet or take it outside to keep it warm on your grill. Either way, spoon it onto a roll and you're good to go. Since it's cooked ahead of time, Everyone can help themselves. Plus, each bite is packed with a saucy, smoky flavor thanks to the barbecue.